Hi everyone, my name is Max Wilson and I'm sorry I can't be there right now, but I'm hoping to be on Skype to answer questions right after this little video presentation. So the root of the work we're doing really is what is a good measure of an exploratory search browser? And we're saying this because we know from exploratory search research that users who are in exploratory search don't have clear defined goals, they have possibly limited knowledge of the systems they're using, and they might not even really know what they're looking for in the end anyway. So it immediately makes them very hard to, to study because as soon as you give them a user interface and a goal to achieve, they're now in goal-directed search, not exploratory search. So that immediately throws out lots of measures we might previously use, like task completion time, because all of a sudden they don't have a task to complete, so how can you time it? And besides, it's possibly a good thing if they spent a lot of time using your browser because they're really getting into and exploring the information. User logging, logging what they click on again, all you're really possibly going to learn from that is that they didn't know what they are doing and they clicked all over the place. Maybe you learn they clicked here first and then here, but all in all, without a complete task for them to do, then logging what they click on is, is almost useless. And finally, um, result accuracy. Again, if they've not got particular information they're looking for going into a, a system, then how do you know when they've achieved it and how do you know what accurate results are if you don't know what their task was in the first place? So we propose a different measure, which essentially measures the different ways in which a browser facilitates users in their searching and exploring and browsing. And there are three aspects to this which we'll break down now. First, in what ways do people seek information? Then, in what ways do browsers let users do these things? And third, when might a user employ these methods? When looking at the first of these, we came across Bates's model from 1990 on user search strategies. Of the four levels she defines, we use the smallest two units which have been well defined. To describe the way people seek information, she defines 32 distinct tactics that people employ with information when not restricted to software. Examples of these are survey, which is the ability to survey your options. Also trace is another, is the ability to trace your path to the current point. Check is another, it's the ability to check your decisions at any time that you've made previously. Super is the ability to widen your search and sub is the ability to narrow your search. These are all examples of tactics as basis level two. We also use basis model for the second part of our problem, which is B, in what ways do browsers let people employ these tactics? Bates also defines what she calls a move, the level one part an identifiable thought or action that is part of an information search. We use this as our counting measure. So, for example, choosing from a list is a move, and then selecting that item is another move. Pressing a button is another move. Entering a search query is different from deciding on what the query is, and so on. Then using these two measures, we can follow a very simple process, which is, for every feature of the interface, for each tactic defined by Bates, count how many moves it takes to perform that tactic with that feature, then move on to the next tactic, and once you've done all the tactics, move on to the next feature. And once you've done that, you can store all of the information in a table that looks like this, which very simply has all of the tactics listed across the top, and all of the features down the left-hand side, and then you input the number of moves it takes to perform that, fe that tactic with that feature in the boxes where it intersects. So we did this with three different fasted browsers. First of all, we did it with Flamenco, which has been popular with groups like eBay. We did it with the Rave browser, which is now called RB++, which has been popular with different government stats groups. And then we've also done it with MSpace, our own browser, which has been popular with multimedia groups like ITN and Reuters. And this is a very interesting analysis because they are all different fasted browsers, but they're just implemented so differently and they're popular for different groups of people. It's interesting to try and expose how they're different, what, why that makes it popular for different groups, and, and to identify how we can learn from these different implementations to improve design in the future. So how do we actually analyse these, these numbers? So first you can do analysis by feature, and you get a graph a bit like this. Some things are pretty clear straight away. For example, Rave doesn't have a breadcrumb trail. Flamenco doesn't allow multiple selection, and mspace doesn't allow any sorting or grouping. 
and so there's something there for us all to think about straight away. However, if you're designing a system based on a given specification, you're unlikely to be missing entire features. So instead, you can analyse the different ways they've been included into your designs. For example, you can see that it is slightly harder to change your selection in Flamenco compared to RB++ and Mspace. Analysis reveals that in Flamenco, it requires four moves from the user to change their mind, whereas in Mspace and RB++, it only requires two moves. You can also see that RB++ outperforms Mspace in multiple selection. This is because in RB++, multiple selection is the default when selecting sibling items. This therefore only requires two moves, whereas in Mspace, three moves are required to do multiple selection. Second, you can do an analysis by tactic, and you get a graph a bit like this. Again, there are some pretty clear things straight away. For example, none of the browsers support the tactic called contrary, which shows you everything but the item you selected. An example of this would be to say, I'd like to see all the computers available that aren't made by Dell. Now this would be really easy to do, but none of the browsers currently do it unless you explicitly select every type of computer manufacturer except Dell. And then you can also look at each of the individual tactics and see who supported it well and who supported it badly. And then go and find out what features helped for that tactic. For example, you can see that Flamenco is particularly strong at the breach and focus tactics at the very end of the graph. Breach is a tactic which lets users suddenly broaden their current view of results. This can be done in two simple moves in Flamenco by simply identifying and removing items from the breadcrumb. In mspace you have to identify the correct facet, then identify the selection, and then deselect it. The focus tactic is the ability for the user to suddenly narrow their current view of results. Flamenco encourages this by prioritizing screen space to those facets without current selections. However, by doing so, it reduces the ability for the user to check its previous decisions as all the options the user did not choose are hidden from view. This is an example of a tactic where mspace scores highly, as all the decisions and previous options are displayed at all times. The final thing you can draw from this graph are areas for general improvement. There is a set of tactics in the middle of the graph which are largely unsupported by any of the browsers. Yet the majority of tactics that are supported well relate to the facets in the user's current selections. So we have now used Bates' tactics to measure in what ways do people seek information, and then Bates' moves to measure in what ways do browsers let users do these things. So now we have to consider when might users employ these tactics. And for this we use Belkin's model from 95, where he defines 16 unique conditions that users may be in. We don't have time to go into this analysis now, but for each of these different situations users might be in, you can attribute different tactics they may use, and then quantify the support for each of these 16 different types of users and then work out which users you may want to try and support further. An example result we found from this type of analysis was that mspace is particularly good for users who are interested more in the meta information than they are about the information. A bibliographic example might be users of a system who are actually more interested in the institutions and the authors than they are the actual publications. However, Flamenco and Albu++ more carefully designed to produce lists of papers at all times. So I hope you can really see the benefit of this sort of analysis. It provides a very structured and clear approach to evaluating the differences in your different exploratory search browser designs. And we hope that you can do this before you're carrying out user studies, which we've said already could be very difficult and very complex. And so we don't want you to waste money finding out information you could have found out at your desk the day before. Uh, in a much less time as well. So this approach that so far we've proposed is yet to be fully validated, which is what we're working on at the moment and what we hope we'll partly do today in discussions. But there are also some, some clear extensions that we need to put into this work, such as how cognitively confusing is a browser when you see it. Because if you have everything at one step away, all of these features crammed into it, then it's going to be very, very difficult to use. So we mustn't forget that in this analysis. But thank you very much for listening and I hope that you find it interesting and I also hope that I'll be here now to talk and answer questions over Skype. We'll see.